Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Atrium by Charles Rice, published by MIT Press. In the 1970s, a void opened at the heart of architecture. In hotels, offices, public buildings and commercial centers, the atrium emerged globally to challenge the modernist legacies of form and function, altering the pattern and experience of cities. While often appearing at vast scale and to striking effect, the atrium also became omnipresent and mundane. In this lively critique, Charles Rice charts the atrium's appearance in the 1970s and its development through the 1980s as it accompanied profound changes in the discipline and practice of architecture. On the 16th of June 2015, a presidential candidacy was declared. The event occurred not on the steps of a state capital, nor on a hastily erected platform in a town square, not even under the hot lights of a television studio. Rather, in an atrium of a mixed-use tower in midtown Manhattan, the candidate took a short elevator ride from an upper-level gallery down to the waiting media below. What looked like an attempt to gather headlines gathered an extreme kind of momentum, the candidate riding a wave of political disruption all the way to the White House. Looking back at this event, which seems like an age ago, what is remarkable is that it took place in a space that itself seemed to belong to another time and another presidency. As the quintessential space of market-led development, Trump Tower symbolized a kind of architecture that became ascendant with the neoliberal conservatism of Ronald Reagan. The setting, then, was perhaps not so incongruous. By 2015, an escalator ride through a marble and mirror atrium was staged as a triumphal entrance. An escalator ride also emblematized the way in which such privatized commercial spaces were received in architectural criticism in the aftermath of Reagan's presidency. The cover of Michael Sorkin's edited collection Variations on a Theme Park, The New American City and the End of Public Space, published in 1992, featured an image of five classically robed figures, three men ahead, two women following, peering about themselves, bewildered as they were carried down by escalator into the gleaming core of what we assume to be a shopping mall. Something had diverted them on the way to the Agora. The appearance of such incongruous figures in the mall spoke volumes about the concepts of place, public and politics that underpinned the book and what its target were, classical, universally understood values of the authentic city were under siege from a banal, consumer-driven uniformity that was both everywhere and nowhere. A concept and experience of the city defined in terms of publicness, presence and propinquity was being replaced by that of an ersat, placeless, decentered city. Where once the city had provided an architectural legibility regarding hierarchy and order, in its dissolution anything seems to go with anything. Hierarchies are both reinforced and concealed at once fixed and despatialized. While shopping malls, theme leisure environments and segregated developments were the main examples Sorkin and his contributors used to describe this new urban reality, the atrium, in its most popular and visible form of the atrium hotel, crystallized the condition. It can be inserted equally in an open field or in the heart of town. 
the inward to look in atrium hotel is as apt to the featureless greensward as it is to the teeming and reclaimed downtowns. A quarter of a century later, a presidential candidacy declared in an atrium could readily be seen as the culmination of the politics of this new American city and its voided public space. Notwithstanding Sorkin's idealism regarding political participation, the problem the atrium was seen to present was not its ersa quality, but the perception that it supplanted architecture's exterior presence. As Frederick Jameson surmised after walking through the atrium of John Portman's Bonaventure Hotel in Los Angeles, 1977, in the mid-1980s, it does not wish to be part of the city, but rather its equivalent and replacement, or substitute. The atrium was a threat to architecture's symbolic power and the way in which it ordered and drew order from the urban realm around it. Jameson saw that the self-sufficient interior urbanism of the Bonaventure's atrium had been imposed by some new category of enclosure governing the inner space of the hotel itself. To locate oneself within the atrium and understand its extent, the language of volume or volumes seemed inadequate. The escalator ride, again, had a significant role to play in what was at stake in this new kind of space. The escalators and elevators here henceforth replace movement but also, and above all, designate themselves as new reflexive signs and emblems of movement proper. Here, the narrative stroll has been underscored, symbolized, reified and replaced by a transportation machine which becomes the allegorical signifier of that older promenade we were no longer allowed to conduct on our own. The Trump Tower development took advantage of an approach to urban planning that emerged in New York City in the early 1960s, offering an exchange between an increase in the allowable floor area of developments and the provision of publicly accessible spaces, atriums among them, that would remain privately owned and maintained. While legally the atrium of Trump Tower must remain open to the public during designated hours, it can be closed for private events up to four times a year. What was perhaps more confronting about the candidate closing the atrium for his campaign launch was that the economic power of real estate development was bluntly parlayed into the political power of brands and personality. While this action may seem exceptional, its possibility was always embedded within the commercial and regulatory structure that produced the tower. As such, it effectively forecloses certain debates regarding the political merits of various forms of postmodern architecture that had fixated the discipline during the 1980s. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.